Hello everybody. Today we'll be dealing with alopecia and homopathic management. I'm Dr. Shalini. Like my earlier videos, the subject for the better retention has been divided into two parts. Part one where alopecia per se would be discussed and the second part its homopathy management would be discussing. So basically what is alopecia? Alopecia or hair loss is a condition where hair falls out from skin where it is usually present such as scalp and the body. Let's see the basic anatomical structure of hair just to get a basic idea. We have uh, hair being divided into two in fundibulum and the isthmus part, suprabulbar and the hair bulb part. Now the hair has a hair bulb, hair shaft and the dermal papillae or follicle papillae. This dermal papillae gets blood supply. Also it is rich with melanocytes whose quantity determine the color of the hair shaft. Hair is covered by two layers or two sheets, the outer root sheet and the inner root sheet. Hair is attached to the epidermis via a muscle known as the erector pile muscle. It has sebaceous gland. Now this sebaceous gland secretes sebum which is the natural condition for the hair which makes the hair rich and lusterful. Before we study in detail about the hair laws and causes, we should know the basic hair cycle. The hair cycle is, is divided into three phases anagen, catagen and the telogen phase. No, anagen means the active growth phase, which lasts approximately 3 to 5 years. So at the given time, the scalp hair would be having 80 to 85 percentage in this phase, that is in the anagen phase where the hair is growing, actively growing. Then it is followed by a catagen phase, that is where there is follicular regression phase, which means there is no reason or cause so far yet known why this phase is happening. Only that it happens where the, 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 there will be regression happening at the follicular area, which we'll be discussing in next coming sessions. Now this will last approximately for two to four weeks. At a given time, one to two percentage of the scalp hair are in the catagen phase. And the last one is telogen phase or resting phase. So resting phase is a phase where the anagen phased hair is thrown out or is being lost. It has been existed or exogenic genesis take place. So this lasts about 3 to 5 months and at a given time about 10 to 15 percentage of the scalp hair are in this phase. How the cycle goes on? Let us see. So we have this hair, dermal papillae. Near the sebaceous cyst, we will see stem cells. Dermal papillae sends on this uh, melanocytes, pushes on to give the hair color and the growth of the hair from the root. This happens for about 3 to 5 years like I had mentioned before. Now it will move on to the next phase like in catagen where there is follicular regression happening that means there will be shrinking at this area where secondary follicular germ is formed and the rest of the hair becomes highly keratinized and the club hair is formed. This lasts for 2 to 4 weeks. This is followed by telogen hair phase where like I had said there is a secondary follicular germ. This secondary follicular germ with the dermal papillae 
together dermapapillae and the secondary germ together forms a telogen germinal unit. Now here what happens is it is a resting phase. It's almost like totally detached. The hair is totally detached. This will last for 3 to 5 months from where the next stage comes where the anagen onset takes place. Here as you can see the stem cells will come down towards the dermapapillae where the new hair is about to get formed. This is the older hair. And here it will start to multiply, Prolifer proliferation will happen. And by then the early anagen phase where the new hair starts keeps on pushing the older one outside. This causes the loss of hair. Now this is a normal physiology or the hair cycle. Any cause interfering at any stage leads to the hair loss. And that is how we will be discussing. So now we will deal with the risk factors because there are many factors that causes the hair loss. We will be discussing few of the risk factors. Most common risk factor for the loss of hair is stress. Both physical as well as the emotional. Then excessive intake of vitamin A is also seen as the reason for hair loss. Pregnancy and uh, actually lactation also. Hereditary wise, lack of protein because hair is made up of basically keratin which is protein. So lack of protein leads to hair fall. Anemia, hormonal imbalances like PCOS, OS, oral contraceptive pills, etc. Vitamin B deficiency, thyroid, thyroid disorders basics and aging. There are a few factors that I mentioned. Now let's see about the classification. There are different types of uh, you know uh, uh, classification that falls under alopecia. We are just discussing three. Classification one where it is broadly divided into congenital uh, alopecia and acquired alopecia. Congenital means which we, we get from the time of the birth and the acquired one after the birth like androgenic alopecia some types of scarring and non-scarring alopecia. The classification two, we just see about diffuse alopecia and localized alopecia. What do you mean by diffuse alopecia is when excessive hair loss all over the scalp happens. Excessive hair loss throughout the scalp. It's not localized because that will fall under the localized alopecia. So when there is excessive hair loss all over the scalp, the most important three factors are telogen effluvium, anagen effluvium, androgenic alopecia. Others like alopecia aerata, diffuse also falls under this. Now what is this telogen effluvium means? Any stress or anything that uh, happens in the body, it affects on the hair cycle. Normal hair cycle where the telogen phase is, the hair goes into the telogen phase. Like I mentioned. The, all those 80 to 85 percentage of the hair at a time is at the anagen phase. Due to these factors, stress factors, what happens? This anagen phase directly moves into the telogen phase. More number of the anagen phase is, uh, hair moves on to the telogen phase, that is the resting phase. Now, localized alopecia is hair loss in localized area, like tinea capitis, like ringworm, syphilitic alopecia, systemic lupus alopecia. Traction alopecia, where you pull it out, then uh, trichotillomania. Trichotillomania is uh, where basically seen kids who have the habit of pulling the hair or plucking the hair. It's seen in nervous disposition people also. The third one is the broader one and the bigger one. It is classified into non scarring alopecia and scarring alopecia. So, non scarring alopecia happens. What we see is primary cutaneous disorder, drug induced alopecia, and alopecia with systemic diseases. Primary cutaneous disorder means telogen effluvium, androgen alopecia, alopecia areta, tinea capitis, traumatic alopecia, anagen effluvium. Then, alopecia with systemic diseases, we can see lupus erythematosus, secondary syphilis, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hypopituitarism. Deficiency of protein, iron, biotin, and zinc. 
scarring alopecia will have we can see primary cutaneous disorder and secondary scarring alopecia like cutaneous lupus and chronic cutaneous lupus like in planus folliculitis decalvans then uh, linear scleroderma psoriasis burns morphia progressive systemic sclerosis radiation therapy sarcoidosis skin cancer trauma basic idea is scarring alopecia has a very difficult uh, percentage of getting back of the hair since it causes scarring of the area where it gets affected so the whole dermal papilla gets affected and gets damaged and once damaged since the dermal papilla has this germ layer and the melan uh, and the stem cells causes to multiply there it is difficult for the hair to grow at that area non scarring means there are more chances and the percentage of success rates so now this is the classification but it will be easier for us as doctors to identify the possible condition or diagnose the possible condition based upon the presentation it is if it if a patient presents with circular discrete pattern patches of loss hair loss short broken hairs we see exclamation point hairs at periphery of patches known as the alopecia areata you see this is normal hair and the broken hair like an exclamation mark this basically is a classical uh, you know uh, uh, symptom of alopecia areata now the scalp and body hair loss possible conditions alopecia universalis all the hair from the scalp are lost like a polished scalp it is alopecia totalis asymmetric bizarre irregular hair loss pattern can be seen in trichotillomania now patchy hair loss that appears like moth eaten so uh, it is secondary syphilis pruritus erythema and scaly chronic cutaneous lupus lichen planopilaris and tinea capitis pustules scarring dermatologic or infectious process like dissecting cellulitis you know your first scalp boils will come and uh, it will burst or acne clearolis and you can then virilization it is women develop male pattern hair growth and masculine physical traits it is an overproduction of androgen causes this is the cause of virilization the case with is a menol adrenal disorder or tumor pituitary adenoma pcos or ovarian tumor anabolic steroid use is a possible cause or diagnosis that can cause these type of the physical findings now let us see the investigation commonly done investigation we do complete blood text blood count then ecr esr blood samples are tested for hair follicle specific auto antibodies skin biopsy are done then ana that is anti nuclear antibodies are done to rule out or to validate the presence of sla systemic systemic lupus erythematosus then plasma reagent to rule out uh, or validate secondary syphilis KOH preparation that is potassium hydroxide preparation is to rule out the tinea capitis or its presence for various you know systemic disorders we do thyroid test tsh t3 t4 the endocrine test for identifying the metabolic disorder rheumatoid fac factor to rule out any autoimmune diseases we do hair pull test with microscopic evaluation in case of telogen effluent because when you do this hair pull test the hair at the tip we can see white bulb that means that hair is in the telogen phase the anagen phase will be with be totally covered with the sheath black sheath there will not be any white bulb so white bulb if you see when you pull out the hair it is in the it means that the hair is in the telogen phase so um, technically speaking like i said uh, the percentage of the hair uh, in the telogen phase is about 10 to 15 percentage and when you pull it if you find more under the microscope you can understand the reason is telogen effluvium or not so like we have mentioned this is the first part first video where we have discussed basic alopecia its reasons its causes 
Then we will now be discussing second video. We will be discussing about the homeopathic management.